rapid fire review. Go. Name five good things about this movie. <laughs> Talk. Well, you fail, but it was a trick question. There aren't five there's, good things about this movie. There isn't one good thing about this movie. Is there one good thing? No. Is there one good thing? One of the shirts that Gal Gadot wears. And the underbutt. Oh. The yeah. underbutt was good. The underbutt scene. I don't remember what else was happening in that scene. <laughs> what are you doing wearing the Catholic cross? You're such a fucking hypocrite. I'm Catholic. Genetically? Genetically. You're Irish and Italian, that's about as Catholic as you can get. It's like the Megatron of Catholics. That's my ch- I stole that's it. My I stole it. <laughs> it's not Megatron, it's Megazord. Oh. <laughs> You're like, yeah, the Megazord of Catholics. Yeah. I just Amy Schumered my own <laughs> boyfriend. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Night at the Movies. My name is Gregory and this is June, and tonight we watched Justice League. I had a dream. It was the end of the world. So we didn't see Justice League in theaters because we weren't hanging out at the time. <laughs> and we didn't want to see it. We knew it would be bad, so we thought we might as well wait till it comes out on Blu-ray. Then we can sit down, actually write notes about everything that's wrong about this movie. Unfortunately, there are not enough pages in a book to write down oh everything that's wrong with the movie. There's so much. I actually have two pages just on the first three minutes of the film. And I have an entire page dedicated to drawing some of the characters. <laughs> It's kind of no secret that we aren't really a big fan of DC. Wonder Woman was okay. I liked Wonder Woman. You mean the DC Cinematic Universe? Cinematic, yeah. I mean, I'm not really a big fan of DC comics either. I've got some detective comics I really like, which is a specific type of Batman comic. Mm -hmm. He's a little bit more detective-y in that series. More like the Christopher Nolan type of movie? Yeah, actually, it's sort of like Dark Knight. Uh, where Dark Knight is a crime drama before it's a superhero film. And I really like um, the DC villains. I think their villains are really cool, like Batman villains. I think oh, they're Batman's really... got the best yeah. villains of any superhero. Which was depressing because Suicide Squad is one of my least favorite movies on planet Earth. They've been just shitting out really cheesy, shitty movies. We liked Wonder Woman until the ending, then it was kind of ruined. I feel like I have hair on my face. It's called a beard, honey. Oh! And with Dollar Join Shave Club! Dollar Shave Club! <laughs> oh fuck. I'm such a fucking shill. We shit all over Batman vs Superman. But there were good things in Batman vs Superman. That one sequence where Batman is trying to save Superman's mom. Kicks yes. all those guys' asses, slams their head through the Pretty floor. Good. That was a super batman -y moment. He was even kind of detective-y and did some detective stuff in that movie. In this movie... What happened? Joss Whedon happened. Joss, oh. Zack Snyder was all over this thing. Yeah. You'll notice a huge tonal shift in the early movie trailers compared to the later, later movie trailers. And what happened was Joss Whedon came in. They didn't give him a director credit, they gave him a screenplay credit, but they reshot a good deal of the film. And you can tell, this movie is like Don't use that word. Why? We say I bleep it every time. No! <laughs> this movie is like a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess, and you could tell two different people like had their hands in it. You can even see the struggle. You can see the moments when it's very Zack Snyder, and then you can see the moments when it's super Joss Whedon. And it really clashes. There's like a battle of the minds. They're, they didn't work together. No. It would be nice, I guess, if, if they had worked together from the beginning. Clearly what Warner Brothers wanted was for Joss Whedon to come in and make Justice League another Avengers movie. All re movie reviewers have been saying this from the beginning, that they have not set the universe up properly. They went too quickly into a Batman versus Superman thing. What? What do you want? I forgot. Oh. It was so disjointed. It 
it almost would have been better. Yes. I can't believe I'm actually yeah, saying this. Yeah, I know this. what you're about to say. It almost would have been better if it had just been Zack Snyder that made this movie. I agree. Oh I think God. that if it was just a Zack I like Snyder I should, movie. I feel like I should be saying a Hail Mary after. If it was just a Zack Snyder movie, it just, would have been better. I just committed blasphemy. Like, I can't believe those words came out of my mouth, but it's true because it was just so messy with Joss Whedon's humor and like Zack Snyder's dark, too deep for you, like atmosphere. It was just like an overload of nonsense. Steppenwolf is the villain in this one. And Steppenwolf is one of the new gods. The comic book version of him looks like me mm -hmm. with a helmet. It really does. And in this movie, for some reason, they made him purple. Why? He looks like Pocahontas's tree grandma. Don't at me. <laughs> he is also not animated very well. It's always blatantly obvious that he's a CGI guy and he doesn't blend in with the scene at all. Syrian Hines, is that how you say it? Yeah, I think Yeah, so. so he was like trying to explain how cool Steppenwolf is, but he doesn't even know Steppenwolf. Nobody does, clearly, in this movie. So he's just like, yeah, he's got an ax and he's mean and he's cool. You can really get a sense that he's cool. And I like how he was only like credited as the voice of Steppenwolf because Steppenwolf was like 100% CGI. I thought that we were in the era where they do um, body masking and stuff. Did they do that for this movie? I don't know. It didn't maybe. look like it. You think like if you need the entire Justice League, the villain has to be some like crazy shit, right? Like the villain's gotta be like really threatening. This guy was like villain of the week. He was super forgettable and I didn't understand why he needed the entire Justice League and super like a Superman. Plus his motivation wasn't even remotely unique. He's just Zod again. Zod yeah. wanted to come to Earth, turn Earth into Krypton. Same and man. kill all the humans. Did they That's not think we noticed? That's literally what fucking Steppenwolf wanted to- Yeah, with the three boxes, which was the most video game thing June. ever. Collect the three boxes and then the world It's ends. nothing like the Infinity Stones at, at all. Yeah, you're right. It's not like the Tesseract at all, where it's all, literally a box. I can't remember. We're asking people we don't know to risk their lives. Supposedly, the budget for this film was Three hundred million dollars. What? I want you to. I want you to think about what you can buy for three hundred. Probably like a fucking battleship. Yeah. Yet this fucking movie looks like a PS3 video game. It's some PS3 looking ass shit. Black Panther. The CGI is pretty good for most of the film. Here's the Black Panther budget. It breaks in the end and again sort of looks like PS3 when the two cats are meowing at each other on the railway tracks. Oh my god, boxcar kitties. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking rhinos. What? Explain the rhinos to me. Okay, okay, we're not reviewing these Black war Panther. Who do they use these war okay, rhinos we're not against? We're reviewing Black Panther. Who do they use the war rhinos against? Shush, colonizer. We're not reviewing Black They have Black space, Panther. futuristic space technology, and Panther. they have war rhinos. We're not reviewing You literally shoot it, and Black the rhino is Panther. dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so impractical. This film, obviously a good chunk of that budget was reshoots and fixing all of the mistakes and replacing them with new mistakes. But that's no excuse for the CGI being so bad. Why does so it look so bad? bad? What was the island called that Wonder Woman? Themyscira. Oh, Jesus. I'm just gonna call it Wonder Woman's house. Woman's Not house. even her home. No, her house. <laughs> Wonder, Woman's Wonder Woman's house. house. <laughs> Wonder Woman's house looked like Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like when they zoomed in, I'm like, what? And then also it was like so obnoxiously highly stylized, almost like 300. Didn't it remind you of 300? That almost part? did. There was, there was one shot where they show real rocks uh -huh. for like three seconds and then it pans up and it's three CGI. Super again. highly stylized, like 300. There was like, there was like bright, like, like a filter, almost like some like Instagram filter on the whole island and it just looked like shit and was really out of place and also the CGI horses 
Uh, can we just talk about the horses? Sometimes they were real, and sometimes they were from a PlayStation 2 game. Sometimes they were from Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Yeah, that's exactly right. Remember the scene where the guy is like throwing horses? We were watching it, and I was like, this looks like Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. And Greg's like, he better not throw a horse. And as soon as you said that, he, he elbows a horse. He literally tackles a horse he, and it goes and flying. And the horse goes flying, and we just <laughs> lose it. We should review Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Comment if you would like us to review really bad B movies. But that movie's supposed to be bad, though. Still, like, yeah, that's true. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's called Abraham <laughs> Lincoln. No. I don't Vampire know. Vampire Slayer. I don't know. So, another weird thing. I swear to God. I swear to God, Superman's face is CGI. No, Was it, it is, CGI? It is CGI. It is CGI? Well, technically, it's CGI from here to here. Why? <laughs> Remember how I said they had to reshoot a bunch of stuff? Yes. Well, Henry Cavill was off contract at that time, so he started filming another film. He grew a, a mustache, and he refused to shave it. It looked photoshopped! It looked blurred! So instead of giving Superman a full beard, which is what I would have done, they just fucking put a shitty Snapchat filter, but instead of a puppy nose, it's an, a shaven lip. I knew something was weird. His mouth was like, hi. Itchy. <laughs> Itchy. The very first thing that happens in the film is self vertical video of kids talking to Superman. They're trying to give Superman some humanity. So again, Joss Whedon has got his name all over it. Even in Batman vs Superman, when they finally show him like doing things, like saving people, he looks like he hates having to do it. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, it's, like a it's a chore for him. And then hard cut to Batman is fighting some dude on a roof. Lamest opening scene. And it looks like a fucking stage. The choreography is awful. It's almost like they made it up right before they started filming. Like, they had no idea what they are gonna do, so they're like, Oh, Batman, you stand over here, this guy's gonna walk out, and then very st very stiffly twist around and start shooting at Batman. And... The dialogue... Oh, the dialogue! My favorite the part! The dialogue! I love this song! The dialogue! The terrible the film. dialogue! Batman's like, there's more of them coming, and the guy's like, What? An army? An alien army? It's cause he's dead, right? Superman. He's dead. He's dead, you guys. He's dead. Superman died. Superman died. Superman. He's dead. The aliens. Superman. Batman talks to Alfred and says, uh, I'm heading up north tonight. And then Alfred goes, good. It's time. And just as Alfred says it's time, Alfred puts up pictures of all the other members of the Justice League. Because we need to immediately know that what it's time for, and what it's time for is here, for the Justice League. Here we comes know, the choo -choo train. we know what it's time for. Here comes it says what it's time choo -choo for train. on the fucking poster choo -choo. outside of the theater. Nom, nom, nom. We know it's time nom, nom, to start nom. the Justice League. Nom, That's the nom. point of the movie. Nom, nom, we don't nom, need nom. Alfred to literally yep. show us nom, nom. that it's time Ooh, for the, the Justice train. League. Nom, nom. Two scenes later, when Batman actually starts talking to Aquaman and saying, I'm putting a team together, that's when we, we can it. learn what time it is. We get what's time it there's, is. There's, there's, a little, there's a little thing in storytelling called anticipation. And show, don't tell. Correct. What, what you gotta do is tease your audience that, like, make them, make them think, Zack fucking Snyder. Make your audience think this, you know what? That should just be the entire review. Learn to make your audience think. Do you remember The Matrix? When like Neo was first taken out of The Matrix and he's sitting on the bed and they're like prodding him and... You don't know what's going on. It makes you try to piece things together in your head by yourself. That's a really fun part of watching a movie. Mm -hmm. Zack Snyder says, fuck you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going to happen before it happens. Then that way you can just sit there with your brain completely shut off. You don't have to think a single thing. Don't worry. Everything will be spelled out to you. Yep. Bye bye mystery, bye bye fun, bye bye intrigue, bye bye anticipation. 
Let's just just watch these shirtless people punch CGI monsters. They're going around the world showing how everybody's remembering the death of Superman. I'm assuming it's like an anniversary of his death or whatever. And everyone's got these giant banners. Because the movie gives you nothing to think about, I'm forced to think about what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing is banners. And you're just like, I'm, how did they I'm print like, that? Like, think of like, the effort, how would you even make those? Little pieces at a time and then put them together maybe? Okay. Batman is entirely mishandled in this film. There's not a single Batman moment where Batman acts even remotely like Batman. Batman has most of the comedic lines and they're not like funny because he's being the straight man. They're funny like he's saying goofy shit that Batman wouldn't say. Near the end of the movie, Superman is like, huh, I didn't think you did this because you like me. And Batman's like, I don't not like you. The real Batman would be like, I don't like you. The real Batman. The real, the ba real the Batman. The real Batman doesn't give a fuck what people think about him, let alone Superman. Superman is like, one of the people he has the least amount of respect for. But you know who was Batman in this movie? Cyborg. Cyborg, Cyborg had almost no personality for the entire, entire film. He was super stoic. Serious. No emotions. Right at the end of the film, they decided him to give a personality. They, he gets a personality in like the last five minutes of the film. He says his classic booyah line which from the comics, except he wasn't that guy for the whole rest of the movie. So even though I knew that that's a thing Cyborg says, booyah, it didn't fit the character that they actually gave him. The robot tech stuff, he doesn't have full control of it. And at one point, his arm turns into a gun and points at Superman is about to shoot. And Aquaman's like, dude, stop. He's like, I can't control it. So the black guy in the group this is 2018, by the way. The black man in the group cannot control his violent tendencies. A very progressive film, of course. Cyborg is super serious and sounds like a villain. He'd actually be a better villain than Steppenwolf. Aquaman didn't trust him because, like I said, his body is made out of like alien technology and he doesn't have control over it. The MacGuffins in this film, the, the chaos boxes, whatever, the Tesseracts, whatever the fuck they're called, the muffins. The, the muffins. Oh god. One of them literally created him. Mm -hmm. But they did nothing with that other than Aquaman just says he doesn't trust him. But that doesn't affect the story in any way. Aquaman's character is cool, but just like Suicide Squad, it's all aesthetic. And he just looks like Rob Zombie. He does look like Rob Zombie. He looks he looks like cool. Rob Zombie. Yeah, he, like, he's the coolest looking Aquaman I've ever seen. He's like the aesthetic, again, like Suicide Squad, really and badass and, and you cool. Know what? The actor that plays him, I like him a lot. He's just like this like weird. I couldn't figure out his character. His character's kind of just like he doesn't give a fuck yeah. about anything. Steppenwolf just shows up just as he appears at Atlantis. This girl makes this air bubble around them, which apparently Atlanteans can't talk underwater, <sighs> but they can just create random air bubbles underwater. I don't know where the air comes from. I hope from. to God there's no standalone Aquaman movie, because could no, you imagine every dialogue? Gonna <sighs> there's gonna be. Okay. <sighs> You'd assume that these two know each other. He walks up to her and goes, took a hell of a hit. She says some insult about him being like the prince or king of Atlantis and he's all like pissed off about it because he doesn't want the position or whatever. I, you can't really tell. He starts walking away and she goes, wait, your mother, I knew her. And he goes, that makes one of us. And again, I'm just, I'm like, don't, do these two not know each other? If he's like literally the king of Atlantis, what the hell is even going on yeah, in this here's scene? Here's what's going on. They have one movie and they have all these new characters and they have, con they have to like condense the backstory of all these characters really fast and like doesn't flow this, well at all. The conversation all. just makes no sense though. Yeah. They don't know each other apparently, yet they kind of talk to each other like they do know each other. Cause it's this, it's like, this is his backstory everybody. Just quickly, eat it, quickly, quickly, eat it up. Some super cartoony British bank robbers 
like get out of a van. They they walk up into a building that you, you don't even see what the building is. You can't really tell. I guessed it was a courthouse and then we looked later and found out that it was. They go into the top floor, they open up a bomb, and then he gives some weird monologue about, like, I can't even remember what he fucking said. It didn't even make any sense. Hope like, and darkness, probably. Uh, I don't even That's remember. Like the it's the ongoing like, dialogue. I can't, I can't even remember what his problem was. He said something about, I don't even remember what he said. They're trying to do some sort of revenge for something. This bomb supposedly is going to blow up four city blocks. Wonder Woman comes in, throws the bomb like a hundred feet in the air and it's it explodes in the explode. air and it's just <laughs> That bomb wasn't nearly high enough up to stop four city blocks from being demolished. Bruce and Alfred are on the plane and Alfred brings up this big display showing all the members of the Justice League that he wants to recruit and Alfred tells Bruce the backstory for all of them, even though it was already established in Batman versus Superman, that Batman knew exactly who all of these fucking people are, yet somehow Batman has forgotten all of this information and Alfred has to explain it all to him. Oh jeez. It's almost like Zack Snyder can't remember what he did in his own fucking movies. <laughs> There's three of these boxes. One was given to man, and man buried it three feet under the ground. <laughs> literally. Hopefully nobody ever farms that land and finds it accidentally. Just dig a little it's bit. It's literally three feet under the soil. It's not even in anything. One goes to the Atlanteans, and they keep it in Atlantis underwater. And then the third one goes to the Amazons. Mm -hmm. They're trying to hide these boxes from Steppenwolf but the Amazons put theirs in a room that doesn't have a roof. And Steppenwolf teleports literally right next to it. <laughs> the queen grabs the box and runs out of the vault and orders all of the Amazons to lock the vault. And essentially that means sealing themselves inside of it permanently. And Steppenwolf just breaks through the wall. So she, she's just letting all of her people die for the, why didn't they hide it? Like, they know he's from space, because right? Movie. We're at the Daily Bugle, mm -hmm. and Lois Lane is talking to Superman's mom. And this, this is when the movie just flips. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's a completely different movie. You can tell when Joss Whedon comes in. It's like, complete tone yeah. shift. Yeah. It's like, really out of nowhere. Yeah, it's got Joss Whedon all over it. It's just joke after joke after joke after joke. And it's really off-putting, because the jokes aren't even really good. No. Divided. We are not enough. So the Batman goes to meet the Flash and the Flash's little secret lair with all his technology and everything. At first, I think I'm gonna like the Flash because uh, he's like blatantly socially awkward, not in an annoying way. He's like, oh, I don't understand people. Batman is like, hey, what's your powers? And the Flash is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Batman just takes one of his battering sharp things and like, what are they called? Star ninja stars? And he throws it at the Flash, like right at his face. Could you imagine if Batman was wrong and uh, that's not how the Flash's power no. works? Batman literally says, I know you have powers, I just don't know what they are. Yeah. And then immediately throws a batarang <laughs> at his fucking face. He knows that the Flash has super speed. Yeah. He's seen the footage. But it's presumptuous of him to assume that it just works. It, he can just like turn it on or that it's always on. For all he knows, he has to like build it up and then he can go fast. For all he knows, that suit is what gives him the power. And he wasn't wearing the suit. At and first. then the one-liners come in and the jokes come in and the awkward comes in and it doesn't stop. What they wanted was for the Flash to be the comic relief. The Justice League cartoon show absolutely nailed the dynamic of the Justice League. Batman is the stoic one that doesn't give a fuck what people think about him. The Flash is brilliant. He is full of himself, way overconfident. Yeah, no, perfect example. He's full of himself. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But the joke is though that he's so full of himself, but he constantly fucks up. And it's hilarious because he's 
so overconfident. But in this film... Hi, Barry. I'm Diana. Hi, Barry. I'm Diane. Oh, that's not right. Awkward! Somebody along the way totally fucked his character up. Totally fucked it up. He's also underconfident. He has no self-confidence, yet still constantly fucks up. So his constant fuck-ups like aren't, aren't charming funny or, or charming or anything. It's just consistently annoying. Every scene The Flash is in is a fucking one-liner. And he's about to say a one-liner in one scene, and then Stephen will fucking punches him, <laughs> and me and Greg cheer. That's not a good sign. When one of the main characters gets punched, I think I should have said, and we finally, yeah, <laughs> like he shut him up before he would say another awkward one-liner. Like we get it, we get it. You're awkward. We get it. Batman's cheeks are fat. Okay, okay, yeah. Back to the they fucked up Batman thing. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that name? Ben Affleck, whatever credibility he managed to get playing Batman in Batman vs. Superman, he entirely, he entirely ruined it in this. Not just because he is comic relief-y and has a lot of jokes. It looks like he, they didn't form fit the suit to him or something. His, like his face is trying to escape the suit. And his eyes look so beady. The funniest part is every time he like jumps and lands, he like awkwardly like tumbles a little bit, like he almost loses his balance. Every time they jump out of the, the weird Batman you do it really well. mobile and he like, he lands really weird. And I think I said out loud, okay, do another take. <laughs> <laughs> Just before that, when they do the rooftop scene, when they meet Commissioner Gordon, they kind of do this weird CGI thing where a CGI Batman flips and then it just cuts to Ben Affleck standing like this. It's like a hard cut that they just edited together as one fluid motion. It looks awful. They're all standing there talking to Commissioner Gordon and the way it's supposed to work is that Commissioner Gordon is supposed to talk to them and turn around briefly while talking and then turn back and then Batman's gone. Mm -hmm. Apparently Zack Snyder's never watched a Christopher Nolan movie because instead it is just awkwardly paced where they all stop talking and then Commissioner Gordon completely silently turns for like 30 <laughs> seconds and then turns back again dead silent and they're all gone. Like they literally could have just walked away and then Flash is there like, uh, ooh, oh, that was rude. Uh, I guess I gotta go, like, oh. There was no magic there. I know what they were going for with the whole Flash, oh, they all just disappeared thing. But it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Batman is so outranked by all of these heroes. He's just like this normal dude who has some gadgets. And it's so obvious in all of these movies. I don't know how he survived this long, honestly. All of them are fighting henchmen, just like killing them. And like Steppenwolf, Batman is on one henchman like the entire time. And he can't kill him. And he needs this big robot thing. Gal Gadot is going around slicing minions in half just wrecking the place. The Flash is zipping in and out, saving people. Batman is fighting one guy the entire time. One henchman. One henchman. Batman, honey, go home. <laughs> Why are you here? So then Batman jumps in his little crawler machine and starts shooting them with machine guns. So now he's finally doing something. Steppenwolf jumps on and he goes, Jesus, Jesus. he is tall. Batman, shut the fuck up. Be Batman for one second, please. Steppenwolf is crouched over, punching the machine thing, and Batman just goes, Jesus, he is tall. He's like crouched over. What, what does his height have to do with anything? What did that, what? Why was that, it just like cut away to this weird one-liner. Then Cyborg comes in, takes over the crawler thing, shoots a missile at Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf grabs it, throws the missile at the wall, and then they're under under the uh, the lake or whatever, under Gotham Harbor, so water starts pouring in through the hole. And, and guess who else pours through the hole? The second the hole opens and the water comes in, Aquaman, Aquaman comes swims in through the hole. He was waiting. Like he was out there waiting the whole time. He was just chilling. Maybe. Maybe I'll help them. If a hole opens up and lets me swim if in. If water comes there's in. There's no way I'm walking on land in there. It's like the family guy scene. For God's sakes, help! Do something! 
Ah, oh, if you don't like starfish, you're gonna be mad about what I just did. Oh, this hole better not open. I swear to God, if this hole opens, I'm gonna go right in there. Without seeing the film, it's kind of hard to explain because there's a lot of things they do that should work because it's done in other movies. A lot of them are even doesn't. tropes, so but they cheesy. just don't film them right. They don't sequence them properly. And it just, it doesn't translate. They take this Tesseract, um, uh, Cyborg goes and gets it, cause he had it apparently. They take it to the bat lair and they all stand around in their street clothes arguing about what to do with it. And they come up with the idea of using it to bring Superman back to life. Ben Affleck, this is his fucking big Oscar moment. And he's like supposed to be passionately saying, we need to take this power, this power yeah. right here. This is his monologue. His, again, dialogue is fucking awful. He's like, science is good. Science is for doing gooder things than good. We're supposed to be good for goodness. That's what science is. And then fucking Rob Zombie's like, what's on your what's weird on mind? What's on your weird mind? Too much. Too much life. What's on your weird mind? The one-liners. So, so Ben Affleck is supposed to be like, angry and passionate and he's like pointing and his voice sounds like he's being passionate but his face is completely blank like he has just completely fucking given up on the movie Steppenwolf's not out there talking about ethics he's trying to burn down the world the way we're gonna stop him is by using his power this power against him they use the box to bring superman back to life and they fight superman and you get my favorite shot in the entire movie. <laughs> but then they just leave the Tesseract on and out in the open. Yeah. So it is entirely directly their fault that Steppenwolf got the third box. If they hadn't brought Superman back to life and had just hid that box, Steppenwolf would not have been able to complete his plan. Superman would still be dead, tragically, sure, but the planet would be fine. The world needs Superman. I made him a promise. See, there's Superman. There's the flesh. There's Aquaman. What's on you? What oh, show them. Show the one from the scene where Steppenwolf shows up in Atlantis. Steppenwolf is this super stoic, soft-spoken guy, and then he shows up in Atlantis. This was Steppenwolf in that scene. Ready, go. <laughs> so then Lois shows up, and they go back to Superman's house. I don't care. And this is Clark's worst scene in the film. You know where this is? He goes, home. Every one of his lines are just awful. He talks like an absolute imbecile. This is home. I thought they Princess leia at him the whole movie. I thought he was CGI the entire movie. His mouth was just CGI. And you could tell. It She's looks like, like terrible blur. What was the like coming back to life? Itchy. Yes, ma'am. His teeth were like He's abnormally like, white and you, shit. You call mom. I wish I wrote down all the all of his lines were just fucking so they all make their final stand. They go to Chezkekistan. It's Eastern Europe somewhere. Somewhere where they don't have internet or Cyborg says they don't read. And we've been following this family that lives there for a while. They're all hiding in their house, boarded up all the windows and stuff because the whole city is filled with these demons. And the girl, they focus on this bug spray. You know when something's gonna be important later on in the movie, they show it? So it shows the bug spray and like the camera's on it. It says bug spray because the demon things look like bugs. So she's like, ooh, bug spray. But it is played as a joke. I thought she was gonna spray them eventually and it would have been like cute that she actually kills like one or something. The end. You expect near the end of the movie something for something happen, like that to happen. Happens. And you just never see the can of bug spray again. You don't put a cannon on stage unless you plan on firing it. So I have a feeling that they were planning on firing it, but that scene was cut out, do you think? Okay. I no. feel like it was. I think what it was, they didn't realize that they showed a cannon. In the final fight scene, they're fighting Steppenwolf in this nuclear reactor. And again, Batman is standing 
completely still, oh, yeah. just like the end of Batman vs. Superman, to the side of the action with a gun shooting it. Like it was in Ben Affleck's contract that he doesn't have to move around a lot. Right ain't over yet. My man. My man. Can we talk about the fact that the comedy suddenly ramped up like 20 times during the, the freaking whole, the ending? Whole, the whole end of the movie again has it's Joss Whedon shock. all over it. Cyborg suddenly is a completely different character. Cyborg suddenly cyborg? He has inflections in his voice. He seems to be passionate and cares about what he's doing. He's laughing. He laughs and jokes around. Like, he where says, was this? He says, booyah. And, and, they, this is not who he was for the rest of the movie, and he doesn't, like, develop into this character. He has a personality, like, the last five minutes of the movie. Uh, what? It's just suddenly he's decided he's a human being. My favorite part, though, is Superman finally shows up at the end, and he's like, yeah, I'm here to save the day. What's the plan? And Batman's like, keep Steppenwolf occupied. And then Superman's like, shh, civilians, and leaves with the Flash to go save people. Now you care, Superman? Now you care? Didn't they bring this motherfucker back from the dead to kill Steppenwolf? For once, it's actually better for him to focus on Steppenwolf and not try to save civilians. Again, this is Joss Whedon trying to fix the character. Ugh. But if Steppenwolf succeeds, which is possible that he can succeed within moments, the entire planet will be fucked. So like cyber, sorry, cyber. cyborg. <laughs> Cyberman. Cyberman just gets snapped in half. He just gets snapped the fucking half. <laughs> and then Superman's like, civilian. What? Batman's like, they're trying to piece Cyberman back together. His leg is like all twisted and fucked up. And he's like sitting there like half dead, like, Argh! and then Superman's like, no, I don't have time for this. And you know how they kill this villain that needed the entire Justice League oh to defeat? God. Do you know how they defeat this villain? Steppenwolf, the most potent, most ominous, most powerful villain, even more powerful than Doomsday. Superman freeze breaths his axe, Wonder Woman breaks his axe, and then Steppenwolf gets really a scared and leaves because he's a scared. He just leaves because he's a scared. They break his axe and that's how he's defeated. He's a scared because he doesn't have his axe anymore. What kind of villain? He needed his little weapon? What? I was like actually baffled. Uh, me too. I was like, is this really how they defeat him? Baffled. Did they even need they needed, Superman? They needed to put together the entire they Justice League. They brought a man back to life for this. To stop, and all they had to, to do was stop break Steppenwolf. His because Steppenwolf was unstoppable. But apparently if he doesn't have his axe, he's a scared. He's scared. He's a scared, he so he away. left. And then Cyborg laughs and he's like a human being all of a sudden. And then they all stand in a line in CGI world. It was like Suicide Squad with a day filter. <laughs> it was. Not the worst film it's still better than Suicide Squad. It's a little better. But it was it, literally just Suicide Squad for heroes. That's what it was. The film made me want to watch Batman vs. Superman, though. We shit on that movie a lot, but the truth was that we had a lot of fun making fun of that movie. This movie is like... It hurt. It's like Suicide Squad. It hurt. It kind of just makes you frustrated. You don't laugh at this movie. like. Batman vs. Superman was so bad it was good, so times, bad it was funny. The only times we laughed were when it was so stupid. And uh, the other time we laughed was when we thought that the Flash's father said, don't be gay. <laughs> oh yeah, Flash's dad is in jail and Flash shows up and the dad's like, you gotta stop coming here. You're working like three dead end jobs. You gotta focus on your life. You gotta, you gotta put the past away and work on the future. And as he's being dragged away, he's saying this. Put the past away, work on the future. Don't be gay. 
That's he's. It's. I think the guard is saying, "Open the gate." Yeah. But you can't distinguish the two don't voices. Don't be gay. It just. Said, I mean, him were like. <laughs> did he just say? Did you say don't? Don't be, be gay? gay. That is something that a father would tell his son. Don't be gay. Don't be gay. And then they do a mid-roll scene, where Flash and Superman set up for a race. And this this is fan service. They start running, and then it freeze frames on the Flash like this, and Superman's super ugly, malformed CGI face. <laughs> He was like grumpy. It holds on it for five whole seconds. And that's the end. The Flash's run effect was really bad. Like, awful. Awful. This is definitely East. Whenever they sh do like close ups of the Flash running, He's like doing this weird floppy arm thing. It was almost like the actor was trying to do it as bad as possible to see what he could get away with <laughs> and they just kept it in the film. There's only one like genuinely good scene yes. in the film and that's after they have their first fight w with Superman. Batman is all beaten up because he uh, got kicked up against a car and Wonder Woman's there like resetting his shoulder. They're having like a, a genuine heart to heart yeah. about who should be the leader of the group. Batman's pushing her to be the leader. She's like, leaders get people killed and I can't be that person because it's my fault that we're even in this situation. Wonder Woman was the only good character in this movie. Her acting was really good. She, her character was her character and she was the best movie of the DC universe so far, so. There's a connection. I think Wonder Woman is just the best one. And then all the rest are shit. Right after the, the final fight scene, um, they're doing another montage over music. But this time, instead of over song lyrics, it's over Lois Lane writing an article. Oh, no. Who the fuck wrote this shit? It's like, hello, darkness, it's my, my old friend. friend. <laughs> the article. Hope is real and we believe in hope and the darkness. The dialogue is actually so bad that you can't even parody it. Mm -hmm. We're in the Poe's Law territory with this film. Here's the problem with DC films so far. Do we, we are, this is a whole separate video. No, this is no, sorry. They're too serious mm -hmm. and they're too cheesy. Mm -hmm. They take themselves too serious and they're too cheesy. And they're like, the dialogue is awful. That's the problem. In Zack Snyder's mind, they were wanted to be ultra realistic, ultra gritty and dark. But at the same time, the dialogue is unnatural. Like beyond unnatural. There was another end scene, Lex Luthor got out of prison oh. and it introduces Deathstroke. And I actually got really excited until Deathstroke talked. And then I was just like, oh, no, never mind. I was like, oh. You did it. I did it. You've like millennialized my vocabulary. <laughs> I have. Watch my old videos. I used to be really smart. Now I speak like a fucking millennial idiot. I was like, oh. <laughs> a plus. Great critiquing. Yeah! I couldn't even give this a number rating, honestly. Could you think of a number rating no, for this? we should use your old yeah, scale. Yeah, so let's just use the old scale. It sort of borders between the so bad it's good and so bad it's bad area. Would you say that this movie is in the so bad it's good territory? Yes, because it's like bordering on it because it was fun to watch it with you just to critique it and laugh at it. If you like watching movies specifically to rant about how bad they mm -hmm. are, and you've watched The Last Jedi too many times and want something new, watch Justice League. It's going to make you frustrated and angry, but you're gonna have some genuine, oh my God, this is so bad laughs. Don't watch it on a date. No. You're not gonna get any. You got some, you got a lot. Yeah, but look at me. Thank you for watching. You guys know the drill. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting Arbor Media through Patreon and by buying our merch. The links are in the description.